third test in our series comparing the McLaren P1, Ferrari La Ferrari, and Porsche 918 Spider. Last time at Santapod Raceway, the 918 was unbeatable over the quarter mile, but this time we find out which is faster in a race to nearly 200 miles per hour. It's the first time all three cars have been measured, and we've got one of the biggest grudge matches to settle. Which is the fastest hypercar of modern times? With McLaren winning the track shootout at Silverstone, will it be Ferrari's turn to finish on top at Brunton Fall? To minimise the effect of using different drivers, we'll run each car in our automated modes, relying on their factory programmes for best power delivery and launch performance. For the 918 this means driving it in race hybrid mode, with the hot lap button engaged. This releases the full potential of its hybrid battery power, amounting to an extra 140 horsepower. The LaFerrari will also be running race mode, which again exploits its full electric boost. Whilst in the P1, we've selected track mode for both powertrain and handling, with the rear wing manually lowered. We could run the P1 in race mode, whilst holding down the DRS button to reduce drag, but we've chosen to fully retract the rear spoiler and hope the car remains stable enough at close to 200 miles per hour. We've got a pretty good idea of which will be the quickest off the line, but let's see which is fastest along Bruntingthorpe's main straight with its unusual 2% incline. Before we start, we're fully charging each car's battery. This ensures their electric motors can provide maximum torque. This is done by driving a warm-up lap, which in turn builds heat into the tyres, ready for the all-important launch. Well, as you can see, the 918 rockets away from the line, applying every one of its 944 pound-feet of torque with its all-wheel hybrid drive system. That's 40% more torque than the other two. But despite this on-paper advantage, the P1 is actually gaining speed more quickly than the 918, once both cars climb towards the 150 miles per hour barrier. By this time it reaches 146 miles per hour, the 918 decouples its front electric motor to prevent overspeed, resulting in a significant loss of power, while the more aggressive aero in hot lap mode continues to add drag. So the P1 catches and passes the 918, while the Ferrari must accelerate to nearly 180 miles per hour before it too can put the Porsche in its rear view mirror. Would the LaFerrari eventually haul in the P1? No. We don't think so. By the time the LaFerrari had reached 192 miles per hour, P1 was closing in on 200, whilst the 918 wasn't far behind either. But it was close. Very close. It's impossible to race these cars using launch control and visually see the same finishing order each time. Whilst the 918 can sit all day with its launch control engaged, the LaFerrari will disengage its system after only a few seconds. Although the 918 looks like it's always ahead, We've taken the fastest times across all seven runs to eliminate any jump starts. 
data never lies. Thanks to RaceLogic's VBOX performance timer, we can focus purely on elapsed times. So let's look more closely at the data. The 918 dominates the first three increments, reaching 100 miles per hour in just 5.52 seconds. By 150 miles per hour, the P1 has pulled in front with a time 0.4 seconds quicker than the 918. But from this point onwards, the P1 is in a league of its own, reaching 186 miles per hour, nearly three seconds quicker than the Porsche, and almost two seconds ahead of the Ferrari. Take a look at the speed time graph, and you can see the point where the P1's acceleration curve bisects the 918. The LaFerrari eventually does the same, but at no point does the trajectory of its acceleration look like intercepting that of the McLaren. The 918 is once again dominant over the half mile, beating the other two cars despite crossing the mark at a lower terminal speed. But the contest was only ever headed in one direction. So where does this leave the LaFerrari? Both the P1 and 918 have been tested before, so our results are not entirely unexpected. The burning question we had, and no doubt you had too, was how would the LaFerrari be? Looked at purely on the basis of its data, we're disappointed that the Scuderia's mightiest road car didn't fare better. Sure, it eventually managed to overhaul the 918, but it never looked like winning this test and eclipsing the mighty P1. But to draw our conclusion there would be misleading. All three of these cars are incredibly quick, and they fully deserve their hypercar status. And whilst the LaFerrari was slightly slower than the other two, most agreed that its V12 Sobrano, combined with those supercar looks, made it the most desirable of the lot. Which you prefer is a matter of personal choice. But at least we now know that on this day, against the fastest hypercars on the planet, the P1 wins. Again.